both the same individual. This is this is supposed to be Pope Paul the Sixth with uh, Kurt of Waldheim, and over here this is supposed to be Pope Paul the Sixth with the UN Secretary um, General uh, Utah. As Matthew mentions, this man here, Utah. And I think it's kind of interesting, even though this probably goes over most ones and ones' heads, even ones who have studied this particular, um, you know, this particular situation here. Now, this is from a video by, um, um, uh, uh, what is his name, Viet, Walter Viet, Walter Viet, or Walter Weit, you know, Walter Viet. He has some very interesting video. This here is about the U.N., and, and the whole conspiracy of the UN. Now let's just play this and let you check this out and we'll connect this with the other portion of this study right here. Nazism, thesis, in between, synthesis. So it didn't really matter which of the philosophies they espoused as long as the end result was the same. Uh, Paul the Sixth, by the way, is the first one to introduce this bent cross or broken cross. Let's read. Now, now notice something right here. This is not the same man. Believe it or not, this is not the same man. In fact, when I first saw it, I thought it was the same um, Pope Paul VI. This is the imposter. This is the imposter right here, and they say he introduced this uh, bent cross. So many of us would think that they always had these bent cross right here. You see this bent cross now, Walter Viet, or Walter Viet, he's going to explain a little bit more about what this um, bent cross, what it actually means. Now, right here is his, is his source, his reference right here that he's working from. And here's the statement right here, Pope uh, Paul VI, really the imposter. He wrote a papal encyclical that called on the nations to abandon sovereignty, to abandon their sovereignty to form a world government. Now, I want you to keep keep this in mind as we've been talking about the counterfeit one. You understand? The counterfeit or the imposter pope. His majesty met with the last true or so-called legitimate pope. And this is another level of this whole mystery that's so very interesting. The last pope that his majesty was to meet with was the the real Pope Paul the six and not this imposter that we see right here. But let's go on with what Walter Viet is saying in this documentary. About uh, what this means. Pope Paul the six wrote a papal encyclical that called on the nations to abandon sovereignty to form a world government. So the Pope himself was behind this and actually called for such a government. And about this twisted cross, here's the quote for you. Paul the six made use of a sinister symbol used by Satanists in the 6th century that had been revived at the time of Vatican II. This was a bent or broken cross on which was displayed a repulsive and distorted figure of Christ which the black magicians and sorcerers of the Middle Ages had made use of to represent the biblical term Mark of the Beast. Interesting quote. Yet not only Paul VI, but his successor, the two John Pauls carried that object and held it up to be revered by the crowds who had not the slightest idea that it stood for Antichrist. So that's a quote that's very interesting about the broken cross and what it stands for. So these are the figures behind or the movers of the United Nations. Now, let's just back this up once again. And we'll compare this with what we've been um, actually researching. This is all actually what we've been discovering as we've been just following one particular area of the study to another and connecting it logically, you know, getting the facts. And then we're finding that these two popes right here, no. these two popes right here are not the same person. This man... And this man is not the same person. This is the imposter. That's the one that introduced this broken cross with this uh, Nazi right here. And this guy is a socialist. Now, the author here, 
is saying that basically he's just seen the New World Order plot coming to there. But now others have actually pointed out how these two are not the same, are not the same individual. And we want to show you this over here. Let's go over here. And let's show you this right here. Just to try to make this point the best way that we can and continue. Now, the witnesses to the existence of the imposter pope. Now, first of all, look at these two men carefully right here. Now, to many, you know, we could say all white people look the same. And maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But let's, let's look at these and see if it really is the same white man. Now, one thing we know is very interesting that the author of this particular page right here, The Deception of the Century, says right here that the left, which is the left right here, is Pope Paul VI. He has a long, straight nose almost to the end of the earlobe. The ear is full and round. The ear is full and round, right? Now, notice his nose, long nose to the end of his ear, earlobe. So you see if you drew a line, you can see that right there, right? Now look on the right. The right is an imposter pope. The nose is shorter and rounder, reaching only three-fourths length of the ear. Ear is longer and not as whole. Look at this. Look at him right there. You can see, you can see the difference. You can see where his nose right up here if you drew a line, it comes up to not the whole length. His ears, like one of those kind of connected ears down there to the side of the face. So it's not the same. These are not the same popes, even though many people see both of these popes, and they'll say one is the next. Can you see it a little bit more better here? You can see it a little more. On the left, you notice the complete difference of ear structure with that of the imposter due to the tiny bone structure the ear is the hardest thing to change in plastic surgery. This becomes obvious in the two pictures. Now, on the right hand is the imposter pope. And it's not us that say these things. It's a lot of diehard Catholics that notice some shocking differences, you understand, between these two men and have actually brought forward the evidence that this is an imposter pope. Notice only that the difference of the ear, but also the shorter nose. Can you see it now? Can you see clearly the difference between the nose? All right. Now, once again, you understand? Once again, you'll notice that, um, notice the prominent birth birthmark between the eye and ear of the true pope on the left. Notice, uh, no, you see the birthmark right there? You see that birthmark right there, right? There's that birthmark, right, of the true pope on the left. This is a, that's a 1973 photo. And conspicuously absent on the imposter right 1977 photo, all right? Th that's also a clear difference. Even though they try to style these two as the same, it's clever. It's very clever, but you can see the clear differences. Even here you can see how the nose here is higher. Goes right here. And how this nose right here actually connects right there. So you can see the difference, even that birthmark part. Now look at look at from the front right here. You can see clearly now from the front when you when you compare these two pictures. Now we just talked on the bent cross that is Pope Paul the Sixth. But it's not this man, though he gets blamed but it's actually the imposter who is on the the right hand of this particular photo. Now, what's so interesting right here is that some claim that there were um, there were what you call uh, the secret third third secret that was revealed by Our Lady or by the Virgin Mary. You understand that indicates that Satan entered into the highest realms of the hierarchy of the Vatican beginning in the year 1972, which is two years after his majesty met with the true and the legitimate pope. The following is yet more evidence of this satanic presence and power operating within the Vatican, and the principal target for Satan's attack is the pope himself, and they say even to this day. Now, they have these um, Our Lady of the Roses that actually give certain testimonials. We showed you the 
the pictorial difference, the very clear evidence of the picture difference. There's some videos that go into even much more um, detail. What's interesting, already they say in 1971, which is the next year after His Majesty had met with his Pope. Now, why we mention this is because the Shepherd of Hermas, which uh, Gail uh, Ripplinger has decided to misrepresent and mistranslate, claiming that it's a book that actually says to bow to the beast and the one world order system, so on and so on. It says no such thing. And we touch on that in another, in another video where we go into that particular detail. But when we read and heard that the shepherd of Hermes, of Hermes, I think it was in Catch a Fire, Chapter 1, or perhaps Roots of Rastafari or elsewhere, was one of the books known to Ethiopian Christians, and in particular to his imperial majesty, it becomes, we're now able to tie in together what Hermes says that, uh, how he was strengthened when he confronted the beast, speaking of the beast, and, 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 and how he did not have any fear or phobia, but Christ had taught him how to overcome the beast. Now we have his majesty for many years um, resisting any sort of direct communication with Rome or Italy or the Vatican because of the events that happened concerning uh, the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, the Pope blessing, and ordering the troops to massacre nearly a million seven hundred and fifty thousand or more um, blameless Ethiopians during that time that Benito Mussolini has had his caesarean designs to refound Rome. In other words, they wanted to refound the Roman Empire on the blood of the Ethiopian Christian martyrs. Now here, it says already in 1971, Our Lady warned that there was a plot against Pope Paul's life. They, they're now crediting this warning to Our Lady or to the Virgin Mary. It says, Your vicar, your father on earth will need your consolation. He is much grieved. My children, by the disobedience about him, the disobedience about him, there are many who are already plotting against his life. Now, the same things that it appears happens happen at this particular time. Same thing with Kennedy. We have the same kind of example with Kennedy and his imperial majesty. When after he meets with these world leaders or religious leaders, because of the power of his good news, and his gospel of the king of kings and, and that truth and his presence, that men who were truly inclined to, um, to, to, to good were able to receive that message of his majesty, and he, had an, he, he made an impression upon them, but that, that also caused the enemies around them to do them in. We have Kennedy as one example, JFK already, 50 days after he gets assassinated, and the 38th or 33rd parallel and all of that. There's a whole bunch of Masonic symbolism there. And now here with this particular pope right here, in Our Lady September 14th, 1971, Our Lady's message also mentioned what? A well-founded plan that will be devised against Pope Paul VI. This could be also the reason that His Majesty came to Quirinale, um, palace, the official palace of the of 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 the king of 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 Italy, you know, not, not the Vatican, you understand, but but Cardinale and that meeting that's on video, and even in that video, there's some interesting things. It's like they try to lead His Majesty the wrong way in that particular video. It's a black and white video where His Majesty and some other of the the family and the government go to the, attend that particular meeting, and this meeting now is a meeting that was long postponed because Italy still had stolen art and facts from the invasion, like the obelisk and manuscripts and other kind of documentations. But here it is said that there were plans devised against that particular pope who was replaced later on by an imposter who would be the last pope, the true one, before he was replaced that his majesty meets with. And we have the video and the still footage archival proof. It says, continue your prayers and sacrifices for your vicar. The enemy has a well-founded plan to remove him from the seat of Peter. Our Lady, April 1st, 1972. And it says, what was the well-founded, 
what was this well-founded plan, and what was really going on in the Vatican. Now, when you see the video of his imperial majesty, right, um, as he's escorted in and as the company with him is escorted in, they almost try to lead his majesty the wrong way. It's very interesting, and the video's cut right then, and then you see first they're leading him, but then you see him leading them. And also his majesty carries his sword, which is symbolically and actually very, very significant. Now, the imposter pope would come in after this meeting, after the time of the meeting with his majesty, because there were most likely things that were changes that were going to be made in the Church of Rome, but the enemies within the church were already well-founded with their plan. So the common knowledge in Rome, notice what it says, this was common knowledge in Rome. It is common knowledge now in the city of Rome that there is one who has been impersonating your vicar, an actor of great talent, one who through surgery, it says, has gained the countenance of your vicar. It is now common knowledge, my children, and now there shall be a game of chess played. And now this game of chess was also with the revolution in Ethiopia, the checkmating of the king, even the king of kings, right? A game of chess played. There will be bishop against bishop and cardinal against cardinal. For Satan has set himself in their midst. And now this is August 14th, 1976. So we see this plan being carried out in stages. You understand? In various um, stages. And there's, like I said, there's more evidence on this. Just look up Pope Paul the VI and, and, and put imposter, and you'll find a wealth of information that we're not able to to cover, you understand, in this particular, you know, in this particular um, video and documentation right, right, you know, right now. Um, and uh, like I said, there's some more. We're just going to go over this, let you see all the information that's contained in this um, particular. There's also a portrayal of a cardinal, uh, Menz, uh, Mazenzi, Mazenzi also betrayed, and you see Nazism, you know, the whole infiltration, the Nazis were still about their diabolical white supremacist end, end game, you know, end game plan. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said right here, V, in the no, what year, 74, V does much damage to the Holy Father by changing his correspondence. V rewrites his letters. V censors his mail. You know, there's the Pope, and then there's the Black Pope, you know, or the other Pope, you know what I mean? And they talk about how the Pope was drugged. And notice what time this is. This is, we know also between 74, when the Pope Paul met with Cardinal Menzenti, Menzenti, um, in Rome in 1970, 74, a lot had taken place in April 14th, 1973, September 27th. Notice these years, these dates. It's 1975 messages. It was revealed that Pope Paul was being drugged, that he was being drugged. And they talk about it here exactly as, um, you know, as he's being drugged and taken out of, you know, taken out of the way. Medication of evil has dulled the brain of the true Pope. Pope Paul the Sixth. they sent into his veins poison to dull his reasoning and, and paralyze his legs. And this is, this is actually the real, the real Pope right there. Even they talk about selling, they were selling stuff from the Vatican after, hey, this is crazy some crazy stuff, and they said that he had died actually on August 6, 1978, at the age of 80. Now, notice the similarity in the ages. Now, um, you find that there's a lot much more PDFs and a lot much more information if you want to get more on this. But the reason why we think that this is very important is because it connects with the true interpretation and true representation of 
a, and, and a first century or early, uh, early Christian document, not first century, but early Christian document called the Shepherd of Hermes. And the connection of his majesty with that, that wisdom and that instruction that we find in the Shepherd of um, Hermes. Let's just show you his majesty and the true Pope, if we still have an opportunity to include this, if the machine doesn't go too slow. We'll show you that as well because it's very important for you to understand what's being said here because it's great significance. This is part of the mystery. This is part of the secret that all these things that happen, although people of the time may, may, may have not really understood the significance of what was going on, the true light of the King of Kings and His Christ is revealing to us exactly what was going on and the significance, in that sense, of His Imperial Majesty as a witness in the midst. Now, let's just go over here, His, uh, his Majesty, and let's go Pope uh, Paul or V.I. And we showed you this picture before, and we're going to go over here and try to bring up this picture um again for you so you can see the difference in the two features remember we showed you the ears the mole we show you the nose so forth and so on um now it says uh 1966 uh um what's it 1966 what's this cannibal ethiopians king's gift to pope uh Paul the sixth. What's this? Power of the Trinity. Oh, they have part of the video, I guess. Four minutes from the video right here, this particular video. Um and we well, we can look and see which Pope it is because there's definitely some you know what's interesting? Because he meets I think his majesty must have met that Pope previously. And what is interesting, there's two sets of pictures from the video. We don't, we probably have to go into the video to get the pictures. This is, oh, that is the fake guy. When he re-meets with him, it's the fake guy. This is why when his majesty walks in, I notice his, his majesty to be, um, you know, when he says somebody is disturbed in, in the sense of something is disturbing. It's very weird. Something is disturbing. And you can see on his majesty's face, you know, you can see on his majesty's face that something is, oh, these are two totally different. When you look at the picture, and they don't have that picture here, but I think it was on the Ethiopian. We have it over on the next computer right here. You can see this guy's face, and this is the other, this is the other pope's face. This is him, too. It's a little bit further in. You might not be able to see it right there so clearly. But on the video, now it's interesting how they say the cannibal Ethiopian. What we're going to do is we're going to backtrack it for a moment. Let's backtrack it. So in, in the other picture where he, where his imperial majesty, um, let's go over here, right here. And, okay. Let's, Okay, here, here we go. Let's just set this up. You see this picture right here? Let's cancel this. Okay, let's cancel this right here. And let's clear this. And you see, there is a a clear difference between, you might not be able to see it. Maybe we have to, maybe we have to actually do, you know, show side. These are two different times. These are these obviously are two different these are two different times from the other vid. If you look in the other vid, the vid that we just showed you a little bit earlier, and we might have we might have a still. Let's see if we have a still of that. If we have a still of that, we can then bring it up side by side, and you can see the difference. There's a clear and evident difference, and that's that's the document there about the ladder in 1929 ladder and the deadly wound, the papal deadly wound, which is here. That's a very, very important document right there. It might be in this suitcase, but as you can see, this is not this is not responding here. We're gonna have to bring that up, bring that up. Um, let's see, bring that up uh, elsewise 
so you can see both of them because His Majesty has a certain look in the video where it's like he must have noticed something is something is amiss. Something is amiss, right? Um, and now when I look at the video, you know, the, the, the black and white video, it looks like the other, you know, like, you know, like something, you're, you're uncomfortable. Something is not, even when they were leading him in there, it's almost like, you know, either they tried to take him down the wrong route, but his majesty wasn't going for that. And then when he's in the room and he's sitting next to this pope, you see that when you look at this picture here, with this pope, you can you can tell that there's a whole there's a whole different there's a whole different um there's a whole different demeanor here. You understand? There's a whole different demeanor here. Remember, we have these two popes right here. Can you see the difference right there? You see, there's an imposter pope. You understand? There's the imposter pope. This is the imposter pope on this side, and this is the real pope. This is th th this is him right here. This this is he, right? Now let us see if we can get a still from from that particular from that particular um from that particular um meeting. All right. Okay. Here here we have this one is kind of small. I don't know how how close we can get in on his face. You really can't see his face there too well, but from the other shot, from the other video, it doesn't seem to be the same pope. And it seems to be two different two different um two different occasions. Two different times, two different occasions. Now here's another picture that he put out. And this is where we see that it's not you see this right here? You see this? If you look at His Majesty's face, let's back this up a little bit so you can see His Majesty's face. You see His Majesty's face? His Majesty is looking at this person like, who are you? Right? Like, he's looking at him because this, okay, let's, let's show you this right here. They, they put the X on the picture, right? You see the, you see the difference between these um these two people, all right, all right, you see the difference right here, all right, you see this, all right, let's see where we can put this, okay, let's make it a little bit smaller so we can put it on the side, or put it right up here, all right, all right, you see that, and then if you look right here, right, if you look right here, you can see, you know what I mean, you see, you see, you see this is, this is the real guy. This is the real Pope. And remember, it's not us that say if this. It's a lot of, like we said, diehard Catholics that many of them couldn't believe it themselves, but they've noticed, and they, you know, they've no, they put this together over the years, and they have been complaining, a lot of them breaking away from the church because they see something strange. They talk about Vatican II. You hear a lot of them complaining about this Vatican II thing, and they say that the church is ruined, and some people had left the church. And this is the same meeting right here. And when you see the uncomfortability, if this is, remember, they say both these are Pope Paul VI. But if you see this man, right, if you see this picture right here and see that there's a total different, you don't find this camaraderie, this, this even a Christian, in a sense, friendship. Now, yes, he's in the seat of, of Peter and the Pope, and we know what they have done, but remember how his majesty, and this, I speak this to the Rastafari, remember how his imperial majesty, you understand, seeks to walk in the way of Christ, that somebody can be from a so-called bad family, but they could be breaking with the bad family and seeking to go the good way and try to lead the family in the right way. And the, the, the man that was was uh, sacrificed or the, 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 the pope that was replaced, he seems to be such a man, and he was replaced by this guy right here. Now notice if you can see this guy right here. You see this right here? Now notice his majesty's look at him. I remember watching the video. And I was wondering why his majesty is like, and you can see it's pretty clear. I think it's a rye, the the Italian video people who, who filmed it. And 
when the camera pans his match, his match, he's like looking him up and down, like 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 his face. You can tell he's looking at his, you know, face, and almost his match don't say, "Well, who are you?" Because everybody say he's the Pope. Remember, they had all these Jesuits around too. And notice how His Majesty is carrying his sword. It, it's kind of a very, it's symbolic. I'm sure that sword wasn't just ceremonial, too. You understand? It's very symbolic. Now it all makes sense. You understand? And most likely His Majesty knew what was going on. He, he, he recognized what was going on. Now, here's what I want you to compare. I wasn't able to do this in the, in the, in the first vid where I talked about, or I sought to talk about um, uh, Hermes, or Hermes, the shepherd of Hermes, and what that Gail um, uh, Ripplinger, how she missed, you, you see the difference between these two people? You see this? You can tell now, right? One wear glasses, one don't wear glasses. Can you see it now? You see this right here? Okay, keep 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 those two faces. This is the real Pope that His Majesty meets with over here. His Majesty meets with this Pope over here at a obviously earlier date. Then when His Majesty went to visit, you understand what he said, uh, no hard feelings but no obelisk. They didn't want to return the obelisk. That was one of the conditions to having a formal kind of state visit, you know, to resuming so-called diplomatic relation between the two countries. And this is all, this is like back in 70, you know, since the war ended in 41, because there was still unresolved business like Ethiopian stolen art and facts that the, that the, that the um, Pope and then they didn't return it until recently when the lightning had struck the obelisk. And many Ethiopians and many of us says that's when they decided to, um, you know, to return it. You understand? To return it. This, maybe this is the occasion where Matt said there's something always brewing. You know, wicked and mischievous and wicked men and conspiracies, you know, are, are, are happening because it's obvious to him. But as Matt he keeps staring at him, almost like, who are you? Because as Matt he knew who the... The, the real pope of that time was before they had placed, you know, an imposter. You see, this was the real man here, and this is this person right here. You know, this is this person right here. You can tell by the, the glasses is a, is, a, is a dead ringer too. In fact, in fact, that's one of the things that's really a dead ringer is the glasses. And here is a, is, is a closer shot. You know what I'm saying? Here's a closer shot right here of, of the real Pope on the left and the counterfeit on the right. You understand? And you can see here, and remember they say, if, if, if you were to see this, you say, oh, these are two different Popes. But they were pretending and had pretended, this is before video and everything, this is when, 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 when TV and film was strictly controlled, people really didn't have VCRs, and it was just what was printed in the paper, and they would print the best picture or a certain type of picture, because it was a, it was a inside conspiracy. But when you look at His Imperial Majesty's face, let's just see if we can get a, a close-up of it. You can see his Majesty's face right here looking at him straightway, almost saying, Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? The Pope. Who's the remember when he's walking down the hall and it's like they try to make him go another way? He probably you know what, since the other Pope depending on when this was and what was going on, the other Pope you remember when it says the other, the, the, this other guy was interrupting him? That's what the black pope can do sometimes. Like if you're the white pope or the regular pope out there and I'm the black pope, I can actually conduct, because whatever business you have going out, you're not putting it in the mail. You're not sending it. You've got to send it, and they're, they're the ones who control the Jesuit and those who control the, the basic household. You, you, you're, a, you're a symbolic figurehead. Now, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind, and y'all willing... I'll be able to put this all in this particular video and hopefully won't have to, you know, cut this with the next video to keep this rolling. We're going to go to 
our um, notes on the Shepherd of Hermas. We dealt with it a little bit previously, and this would now, I think, all really fully make better sense. Now, uh, Gail Ripplinger was written a pretty good book um, concerning, uh, here it goes right here, Hermes the Shepherd Misquotes. Hermes the Shepherd Misquotes, which is a very, very um, important um, document, as well as um, the Shepherd of Hermes is interesting because Shepherd of Hermes was one of those kind of um, um, scriptures or holy writings that was not scriptures in the sense of replacing the Bible or even being included in the canon with the Bible. But when you understand the contents, it, it, it helped the Christian to mature. And this is one of the big fights why they removed this from, from Christian reading. They have Christians reading people making up books, but they removed this particular book from Christian reading because it's one of the kind of wisdom type of books in that sense, the practical Christian wisdom to strengthen fellow Christians in the walk with Christ, you understand, through a series of kind of revelatory um, wisdom and visionary experiences, you understand, which are of practical use, practicus, and of practical use. Now, we've already established that these two popes are not the same pope. Right now, we've already established that. Hopefully, we'll be able to open this um, document. Our computer is, you know, open this document and get to the the Shepherd of Hermes misquotes because um, Gail Ripplinger, and I don't think we should have to bring up her 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 her, her picture in this. We actually have her picture um, in the other video that we had touched on. Um, but if we can open this vid and um, give it an opportunity to open up, and when you when you see how the Shepherd of Hermes lies are being dissembled on the Shepherd of Hermes, saying that the Shepherd of Hermes says take the name of the beast, the Shepherd of Hermes says to to like give up to the beast, uh, found a new world order, so forth and so on. This is what Gail Ripplinger and others believe concerning the Shepherd of Hermes. They think that the, the revelation is going to be taken out the Bible and they're going to put Shepherd of Hermes instead. Maybe they're going to put a falsified version or perversion of it instead. But when you look at the actual Shepherd of Hermes, which has also been translated King James, KJV, wise, it tells a different story. Yeah, this we had another file that we was trying to open up and this other file didn't open up right now. So we might have to return to this, give it a couple of more moments. But it, it, it's now becoming very, you know, very clear. It's becoming abundantly clear what was going on. Because this particular video raised a lot of questions for me. I was like, His Majesty is sending us a signal. Something is, something is not right here. I was like, pay attention to everything in this, in this particular video. Even when his majesty starts to speak, and he's speaking, he's speaking, you know, you could say, like himself. You know, there's no seeming, there's no fear in his majesty, but it's like, it's like one of those WTF, if we can even say that the emperor would um, think such. It's like, you know, what the folly, let's call it what the folly what the folly is going on here. Because at this particular time in 1970, you understand that 1970 is not supposed to be this guy, this other pope, or the counterfeit pope, or the replacement pope. Now, now remember, it's not us that say that it's a counterfeit pope or replacement pope. The pictures, you know, the pictures tell a thousand words, right? Remember, this is His Majesty. Here he's meeting. In fact, I don't think they even t touch one another. His match is, doesn't even, even when his match is, is walking, it's interesting because, like, people want to get close, and they kind of come close, but it's like there's a force field. You see, there's a force field around his, even when he turns around and the camera's behind him, and you almost see the whole crowd move. You know, the whole crowd is, like, moving like a wave. Now, this is another document that's opening up now. So, so now it's, 
is, is opening up, and maybe we'll be able to show you the New York part of the New York Times article. We had the whole article where it basically explains how His Imperial Majesty had um, refused invitations to come and to uh, meet with the Italian and the papal, you know, authorities as to, like, smooth over the relationship from, you know, the fascist aggression. But because Ethiopia still had, had made claims that many of their um, art and facts had been stolen and had not been um, returned, like you can see this article right here. This is from Time Magazine, right? The Time Magazine. You see what it says? Ethiopia, no hard feelings, but no obelisk either. Oh, they thought they were real slick, right? You know, you don't go steal and kill and massacre. And this is the only part of the article that we could, like two paragraphs. Now they're charging money for everything. Before we caught the article, before they were charging money for it. If you got this particular article...